November 22, 1963, was a day that will forever be remembered as one of the most traumatizing and controversial days in American history. John F. Kennedy was in search of support from powerful figures in the state of Texas, where he had many adversaries. Texas Governor John Connolly was a perfect man. He could surely bring some popularity to Kennedy in his ultra-conservative state. A motorcade through the city and a luncheon address with Connolly would definitely suffice, but a drastic turn of events was in store for the president and governor that day. The bright morning sun dried the previous night's rain on Dallas's street as Kennedy's open-aired car made its way through the city. It was 12.30 p.m. when the Lincoln convertible turned on Elm Street, passing the Texas School Book Depository and into the Dealey Plaza. The next few moments were captured on Abraham Zapruder's 8mm camcorder. Several pops rang out and people assumed they were firecrackers, but they were entirely mistaken. Kennedy suddenly jolted in a confused state of pain as Con Connolly simultaneously did the same. Seconds later, the top of JFK's head was torn off by a final bullet. Kennedy and Connolly's car immediately sped off and route to the Parkland Memorial Hospital. At 2.30 p.m., the 35th President of the United States was pronounced dead. Connolly was placed in critical condition but would survive. Moments after the shooting, a Dallas police officer sees a man exiting the school book depository and approaches him for questioning, eventually becoming shot and killed. Eyewitnesses called police who took the man into custody. His name is Lee Harvey Oswald, ex-Marine and assassin of JFK. Four days later, Oswald was shot and killed by Jack Ruby, a Dallas club owner and suspected mobster for reasons still unknown. Oswald's first of three shots missed the target, and the second hit both men, entering Kennedy's back, exiting his throat, penetrating Connolly's lower back, exiting his stomach, passing through his wrist, and embedding in his thigh. Oswald fired from the sixth floor of the school book depository, so the trajectory of the bullets should be at a considerable downward angle but the second bullet passed through Kennedy nearly perpendicular to the ground, dropped about a foot, and continued on through Connolly at the appropriate downward angle. The second shot is commonly referred to as the magic bullet, because no regular bullet could create such havoc. Oswald's third shot hit Kennedy in the head, ending his young life. The magic bullet was later found on a hospital bed, where Connolly received care, and it was nearly in perfect cosmetic shape, again, hinting that it was no ordinary bullet. For those who do not believe in the magic bullet, conspiracy is their explanation. Photographic evidence provides uncertain suggestions that, were, that there was a second shooter on the grassy knoll along the road. 118 people that were at the Dealey Plaza were interviewed about what they heard that day. 97 said they heard three shots, but 21 people claimed they heard four. An auditorial recording from an open police mic also provides evidence of four shots, but nothing can be for certain. Careful analysis of the Sapruder film also shows Kennedy's head moving back after the shot, suggesting the shooter was in front of him, not behind in the school book depository. Many rumors surround Kennedy's x-rays, autopsy, and body after examination. John F. Kennedy's brain somehow seemed to disappear days later, hinting to a possible cover-up. Today, over 50% of the U.S. believes in the second gunman, or some kind of conspiracy. With so much evidence no longer available, future technology stands a slim chance at making any huge breakthroughs. In all reality, the general public will probably never know the truth behind what really happened on November 22, 1963.